What's going on everybody? Manual Pedal here. I'm packing up some gear for a long weekend that I'm going to be doing for a route that I had just finished up that I'm really excited about. It's called the Hudson Explorer. That's what I called it because I feel like it's a nice name for it. It explores all the way around Hudson from New York City going all the way up north to Bear Mountain. It's actually a route, an extension route from one that I did last year that was an overnighter. But I wanted to make this one more of like a two night stay so I can really get out there and just kind of get more exploration in and check out some of the cool towns that's gonna be going further north. So I'm packing up all my gear for uh, the two nights I'm gonna be out there. And uh, I'm trying to also keep it light as possible. I'm gonna share with you guys what I'm using. I got everything laid out on the floor right now. And um, I don't really have any food right here, but just the essentials like a cooking set. I got tools, my air pump laid out and um, shoes, water. But uh, I also have the bags here too that I'm gonna be stuffing it all into. And I wanna show you what that looks like on the bike. But first, get it onto the floor. Uh, I can share the route with you guys. If you want to see more about it, you can check it out. Um, it's on the description here underneath the video. And I built in a ride with GPS, so you can just go ahead and check it out. And if you want to ride it, uh, definitely hit me up because we can probably do it together um, as safe as possible. I'm also looking to make it more of an invitational as well later this spring into the summer. So I'm going to see if I can maybe invite some friends out and see if they want to come and get some camping in too. But uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and check out some of the gear. And from there, we'll put it onto the bike. And uh, the bike I'm going to be using is going to also be the bike that I used last time. So I'm excited to get it out for a second time. And that's the Ibis Haka MX. So yeah, let's do it. All right, so I have everything laid out here for the two nights that I'm gonna be out. Starting from right side, we have everything from the sleep system. We have uh, the camping gear for the tent and everything like that. We have uh, tools and we have a floor pump and cooking equipment, electronics, safety. We have lighting and we have the helmet and everything, the shoes and we have hydration on the left side. And my seat pack is also up there too. We're gonna to be starting from the right to the left on this one, uh, just because there's a lot more light over here and everything is much more spread out. So right now we have the sweet roll right here that's gonna be harnessed to my handlebars. That's gonna be going in between the drops. Inside there I already have stuff. This is my tent and my sleeping pad. So that's already up in there. I'm gonna stuff some more stuff in it too on the sides and then just roll it up and try to get that as narrow as possible between the drops. Next to it is gonna be my sleeping bag. That's gonna be a 30 degree bag. I'm a pretty warm sleeper so I may also be laid up, layered up with uh, some nice base layers and uh, hopefully my puffy jacket and hard shell will keep me nice and toasty. Next to that, I have a mini floor pump. I have an extra tube. I always carry an extra tube with me. I also have my cooking pot system and a little mug over there on the left. That's my all titanium, so it's pretty light. Electronics is the charger over there, which will charge like GoPro batteries and things like that. And for luxury, a little can't pull it too. Over here, I got my medical kit inside there. And if anything goes south, if I get like a little burnout crash, hopefully it doesn't go down. <laughs> I have to knock on a tree later for that one. But uh, <laughs> yeah, headlamp, always uh, recommend bringing one of those. I got a lot of Voli straps right there, just in case I want to mount some things up and tighten it up to the handlebars. I've done that before with the sweet roll because the sweet roll can get kind of bulky in the front so it's nice to kind of cinch it down a little bit more with those i'm gonna be rocking uh mountain bike shoes on this ride um i thought about bringing like sneakers and just regular flat pedals but i haven't fully i mean i decided to just go with these because it's just a bit more comfortable to pedal with uh i'll also be able to move a lot faster than riding flat pedals with the bike so i'll probably bring an extra pair of light sandals but we'll see helmet and I have the egress pocket right there. That's gonna house a lot of cool stuff like some snacks. I'll put my electronics in there too since it's like waterproof. And I have my water bottle holders here from Rebellion Designs. And I got their seat pack too. This is the Spine Lock 16 liter. I'm really psyched on this one. Before I've had the, the Scotcha bag. And that bag's awesome, I still have it. But this is gonna be a newer edition that I'm gonna be using. I like their new harness six system here. It's held up by a nice hard aluminum plate. And um, yeah, that's gonna be going onto a mount that's attached to your seat rail. So that's gonna be pretty cool to use for the first time. And now 
I want to show you guys what this all looks like on the bikes. Okay, so here's the bike that I'm going to be loading everything on. This is the Ibis Hawk MX. This is going to be the second time I'm going to be out with this bike, so I'm pretty excited about that. And instead of an overnighter like my last trip, it's going to be for two nights. So I'm pretty psyched to see how this thing is going to be uh, holding all the gear. I got the Revelate Designs Tangle Bag on there, and that's going to stuff my uh, two liter water pet, uh, reservoir that's going to be loaded inside here. So I know it sounds like a lot, but it's been able to get in there before with my floor pump too. So not bad. Now, without further ado, I'm going to just load all this stuff here onto there and then we'll see how that all looks in the end. everything on packed in nicely on the bike I still have some space in here into the spine lock seat pack and I need to get my clothing inside of here which is gonna be my rain pant and uh, gear that I'm gonna be using uh, that's if there's like a storm or just to keep me warm at uh, camp for riding gear it's gonna be like a bit but everything so I have to have some space in here too I have plenty of space in my egress pouch that's going to be in the front of the bike so I can stuff some things in there too that's mainly going to be like snacks and stuff like that uh, food I'm going to be eating while I'm riding inside here I have tons of space to fit my reservoir and I have two water bottles up here in front as well and I have two water bottles here so I got a 24 ounce two of these I got 24 ounces in the front and I got a nice two liter bladder so not too bad and especially since there's going to be lots of services nearby I'm good to go um, what I have liked to have on this bike, if it was option, if there was an option, was to put some cages on the side of the fork, so that I could mount the bottles there and free up more space over here in the cockpit. I may actually have to figure out some kind of way to do that, just because I want to be able to shoot some video footage, but um, from the cockpit pilot version. But you know, at the same time, I'm going to be also shooting with the tripod on the floor, so you'll be seeing a lot of ride bys. <laughs> but um, yeah, got everything on here nicely and tight and. This system's pretty agile. I'm really liking this uh, spine lock by Revelay Designs. It doesn't like sway back and forth with everything stuffed in here and it's nice and compact. And also like over bumps, it's not gonna really be flexing a lot either. So nice job for this one on Revelay Designs. I'm really excited to use this for the first time too. And it also has a nice little air hole here so that once you compress it, all the air just has an opportunity to escape from the bag. So it doesn't leave it all bulky. and any parts of the bag that's going to be like packed with some air so really psyched one thing that's kind of annoying right now is the front end of the bike whereas i'm riding with a two-person tent versus a one-person tent i think a one-person tent would be able to like stuff in here a little nicer you have more width to be able to like grab the drop bars because right now i'm just able to get a little bit in here it's not going to bother me too much i've had the same problem with my last ride that i did with this bike but i just need to get a different size tent Something a little bit smaller because this is really bulky. I also have my uh, sleeping pad inside here too, so that could also be contributing to its size. But from the width side, it's it's a little too wide and it's hitting the drops a little bit. So I am looking into another tent. It's a one-person tent, and it's supposed to have a lot of nice uh, features to it, and it's supposed to be really really small. So once it becomes available, I'm going to test that out and get my hands on it. So but for right now, everything looks to be good to go. All right, everybody. So we have everything all packed up onto the bike. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave them in the comments below. I'll leave the description to all the bags I'm using everything in there as well and route details. And again, don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram too at manual underscore pedal for more details on my trip. That's going to be going down. Really excited to get out there again. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.